So I'm gonna talk about uh, <clears throat> the Breath of a Nation, man. Movie review. From my perspective and my opinion. Um I think the movie was a great, great, great movie. You know, I think everybody should go first of all, everybody should go see Birth of a Nation. Um the movie is a very important movie to our culture, but I wanna talk about uh, the importance of the movie, the symbolisms and uh, so just some of the sabotage going on with this movie because it seems like there's a lot of quote unquote controversy surrounding the movie. Uh, first of all, my opinion of the movie, I thought the movie was great, right? I thought the movie was wonderful. Um, I do think it could have did a little more. Um, just a little more. <laughs> this was a, just a little more of the uh, the meetings and showing a little bit more of what the people did in, in their planning and all that. But uh, the reason why this movie is important to our culture right, is because, for one, Nat Turner... Um, he was a great revolutionary for um, for black people. You know, he fought up against the system. He fought up against racism um, in a time which I was never a good time, but in a time where during slavery, man, you know, saying so he pretty much rose by itself. You know, um, and it's also important because it shows other people that it shows the world that all black people and all enslaved people during that time wasn't just sitting around wishing and hoping they could free themselves or wait no master to do everything. You know, that's why um, Nat Turner's story movies is so important. And it's also important because in this age of film and mass media production, nine times out of ten, you know, the white media would take a story from the African American culture and they would they write it themselves. And when they write the story themselves, it takes away from the authenticity of the story. You know, they put on it on whatever spin they want to put on it. You know, however they want to do it, however they want to tell the story, that's how they do it. They have millions and billions of dollars to do this. So, when you have a, um, a black man, it's important because when you have a black man who really trying to tell our story from our perspective, it's important because they don't, they don't, you know, the powers that be don't like that because, you know, the stories are very strong story of revolutionary of rising up you know it's a story of black people actually fighting back and not being afraid and when you have that you know it's gonna in that story you're gonna have white people dying you know what i'm saying you're gonna have white people getting killed you know um you're gonna have people fighting against the system and realizing who they are you know and, and seeing themselves seeing that they can fight against this system seeing that they can really truly be free you know it's not about hating white people you know it's not about hating anybody you know it's about loving yourself enough to want to live as a human being as god created you that's why the story is so important and that's why nate parker making the story is very important because you know we've been talking about something like this for years and years and years and nobody still i ain't say nobody stepped up but nobody was able to make this movie happen you know in a way we wanted to make it happen so the fact that this brother stepped up and he did it from a grassroots level, right? Nate Parker, that is. You know, he raised the money himself. He w he went out and worked for the money, begged for the money, raised the money, and he got the money. He made this movie happen. You know, he took it to the independent um, film festivals, the Sundance, I believe. And um, according to my understanding, he won all the awards. You know, got a $17.5 million payout. That's like the biggest in the, in, um, the history of independent film. You know what I'm saying? black man doing this so we got to give the man some credit for even attempting attempting this movie in this um in the state of america america because we know how hollywood is man anything that doesn't fit the status quo anything that doesn't show black people lying down being submissive being oh yes master what can i do for you next master they're gonna run with it if you look at all the slave movies that we've seen so far pretty much all of them show us in a very um docile state you know and being in a docile state, that's it fits along with the status quo, man. But when you have a movie like The Birth of a Nation, the Nate, um, the Nat Turner um, story, the the revolution of that story, man, they don't want to be out there on a mass media level like that because it is not only does is this, the story important, but it inspires other independent black filmmakers to do the same thing. We know that 
genius is in the black community. You know what I'm saying? We know that we are the, the, some of the greatest storytellers in the world, in the world, you know? Just like they go to the hoods and get the basketball players and the football players and the singers and the rappers, the same genius is in the hood with storytelling, um, narration, um, economics, um, education, all that stuff is in the hood too, quote unquote hood. So this type of stuff inspires other African American men and women to go out and tell our stories. And really, we are doing that on a smaller level, just not on a mass media level, but Nate Parker was able to do this on a Hollywood level. That's why it's so it's a big deal because you when you do it on a mass level like that, it's going it's going across the world, you know. And really, he's the only brother in that lane making it happen like that, man. A story that we 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 can look to because the Nate the Nate um the Nate Turner story, man, it's 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 real. People die, you know what I'm saying? A lot of white people die. It just doesn't fit, you know. Um, <clears throat> and two along with that, it's important because. Another important thing is that um, Nat Turner's mother um, was an African. She was a native-born African woman, you know, during the time. And that's important because, you know, we know that as African people were brought over to this country, you know, at a few generations, you know, you have kids not being born in Africa. They born, they be born right here in America. And they losing sight and they losing that connection to their African heritage. You know, so you might have the third, the second generation child. Your mother might be born in Africa, but the son might be born in America. So that changes the dynamic. But what's important in Nat Turner is that his mother was actually born in Africa. She And she taught him a lot of those African ways, a lot of those African traditions growing up that she knew. So she was able to teach him about African kings and queens, African deities, African religion, African spirituality. You know, she was able to teach them and instill, instill in him what it is like to be an African. That's important, too, because... That shows the connection and the power of us knowing who I, who we are, knowing ourselves, you know. So, and I, if I'm understand, during that time in Virginia, a lot of um, people, you know, a lot of enslaved people were born in, born in Africa and brought over during that time. For some reason, in that area, I don't know why. I gotta look that up. See why during that time in that area, it was more of a concentration of people native 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 born in I say natively native born African born natives that brought over that was there. So a lot of them people that, during that time, they knew firsthand their African culture and their lineage. So they were able to teach their kids about what it was to be a human, what it was to be an African. So um, Nat Turner had a lot of that in his system growing up. You know, he had a lot of that. And the fact that he was able to um, to read and learn, he had a special assignment on, on his life. So that's, that's very important to understand. You know, um, another important thing to understand is that... Um, uh, the Haitian Revolution, you know, the Haitian Revolution, it, it kind of happened a little bit before that time. And so, you know, the story in it, the, the message of the Haitian Revolution was spreading worldwide, you know, and they heard they heard of that. And what the United States and all other cultures didn't want to happen was to have uprisings equivalent to the Haitian Revolution. Because once once black people start to know that they can really do it then they can really do it, you know, and they, they start to scare people, man. So this is why this movie is, is important. Man. It shows us that everybody just was, wasn't laying down. From the time of, um, I believe, Nat, um, Nate, Nate Parker, uh, <laughs> I mean, Nat Turner, kicking that confused. From the time of Nat Turner up until, like, the Civil War in America, there were about 300 recorded arm-resistant movements in the United States. They weren't successful, but people were revolt. Black people were standing up and fighting for themselves all over the country, trying to free themselves. You know, and, and that's 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 very important to know because that changes the narrative, that changes the dynamic in who we are and what we know about ourselves. You know, because all of our ancestors weren't just sitting behind bar or sitting in chains waiting on somebody to free them. If you're gonna free yourself, you gotta free yourself. If you're gonna be free. You gotta free yourself, and so. The message of the Haitian Revolution spread throughout the world. Everybody knew about it, but you know they didn't want they didn't want the United States or people in the United States to know that. Um, a lot of symbolism. It's, it's gonna be some spoilers now, so so y'all get ready for that. I'm trying not to put too much in there, but um, a few symbolism in the movie um, where they show that when he was a little, when he was a little boy, and towards the end of the movie they show him thinking back to when he was a little boy and how he used to do things, and now him being a man. 
you know, um, it was a lot of symbolism about how if you if you really look at that movie and you think about what's going on today, it's a it's a shocking parallel imagery of how we act today versus people snitching or people saying you don't need to do this, you need to just be happy and stay on the plantation, why are you causing trouble? All of that is in the movie, man. And all of that is happening today. You know, we can we can look at we can look at like the flag and the protests and stuff like that. You know, why are you protesting, man? You know, your family is happy, you eating. You know, but everybody's not eating. You know, it's it's so much um, symbolism that from hundreds of hundred hundreds of years ago until today, it's still happening, and it's still the same thing, and we're still dealing with the same thing. Uh, another powerful um, symbolism it showed um, Nat Turner. He was hired out by his um, by his slave owner to go around and preach to other plantations, preach to the slaves at other plantations. To get them to be docile, right? So he would preach mass passages like "slaves obey your masters" and stuff like that. You know, um, cause we all know that African people we are big on spirituality. You know, sometimes we big on religion, but we big on spirituality. So, you know, they figure that if they can get the black people to see that it's another black man telling them to be docile because God said so, that's a that's a very damaging and powerful thing to do. Because if you tell somebody like, "Look, you are suffering because God wants you to suffer." You know, and they presenting this thing as the word of God. That's 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 very powerful and damaged. So that was getting that was getting that's why they were getting him to do that because they couldn't talk to those people like a black man can talk to those people. But anyway, as he was doing that, um, Nat Turner, that is, he he began to see how his people were really living. You know, he he began to see the damage that slavery was really doing to his people, and um, he began to um, be just it begins to tug at his heart right so as he was preaching I, I believe that something in the spirit was talking to him i think god was talking to him saying he can't be preaching like this, this this is not right so he would say that for every message for every passage in the bible that it was telling them to be docile and slay obey your masters and be in slavery there was a whole nother passage telling them you need to free yourself you need to fight for your freedom you know and then that's true you know and that shows us that one simply shows us how the Bible can be used to enslave people or it can be used to free people. It's all about it's all about how you look at it. It's all about how um it's all about your interpretation, man. It's all about about your motives and what you're trying to do. You know? So that's that's why we need we need to we need to see this movie, man. You know? And we need to we need to start with the Well, let me go over to this on the sabotage thing, man, because um this movie, now, as far as Nat, um, Nate Parker, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, saying it's a, a controversy around him and, and all that good stuff. And it's not really a controversy, you know what I'm saying? Like, rape and sexual assault is a very bad thing to happen to anybody, right? If, you know, if anybody in this world doesn't consent or allows you to touch their body or be in a sexual position, you shouldn't do it, point blank. It doesn't matter how, you know, drunk somebody is or what they said before. You know, all the, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't happen. However, you know, this this was a case with him that happened over 20 years ago. You know, and he's since that case he's made <clears throat> he's been in the, he's been in a bunch of movies, but he's starred in he starred in at least about five or six since that time. Very popular movie, very very popular movies, and each time nobody said nothing about those movies. You know, nobody said nothing about him. But when he, when he comes to this movie, making this type of movie, now all of a sudden it's a controversy. You know, this was created by the media. You know, now the media's coming out saying this movie is a flop. It's important to understand why they're saying this because they're trying to say that we told you that nobody wants to see real black movies. We told you nobody wants to, nobody cares about the black story. That's why they're saying this stuff. That's why they call this movie a flop. If you look at when you see Gods of Egypt, um, what the other movie they made? Gods of Egypt and it's, it's it's the Exodus. Those movies were flops. Those movies were big flops, man. You know, but they didn't talk about it like that. It was very quiet. Gods of Egypt and the Exodus. I think both of those movies. The budget for those movies was around one hundred and thirty to forty million dollars. But at the box office, they brought in about thirty to forty million. 
So they lost at least $70 million in making those movies, The Gods of Egypt and The Exodus, right? But they didn't call the movies a flop. It wasn't out there like that. This is the first time you hear about this type of movie being a flop. So they're trying to ruin the character of the movie. They're trying to ruin the character of the story. You know, you, you got to look at it and wonder why all of a sudden that they're going in on this man like that. All of a sudden, that this rape case, which was he was found innocent of, you know, in the court of law. Why all of a sudden? Why is it is important now? And why is everybody acting like they're so, up, they're so upset? You know, and I love my sisters, man. I love my sisters, my black, my black sisters. I'll die for them, man. But you know, sometimes my sisters be using this black feminism in the wrong direction. You know, it be using it in the wrong direction because this is important stuff. Now, if he, if he if he actually did it, then that's it between him and God, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, for one, he was at the time he was in college, so he wasn't a popular popular person as we know him now. So we can't say oh his influence. You know, it was a it was a white woman with a pretty much all white jury against a black man, and the case was rape, and they found him innocent. I mean, that that's that should tell you something like that, you know. Um, now, what they doing, what they were doing during that case or during the time, whenever they was involved with each other. Some people say it's right, some people say it's wrong. Everybody grown. They was in college. They was all drunk, playing around. You know, everybody need to take personal responsibility for their own actions. You don't end up in those situations. I'm talking about men and women. You know. You, this ain't victim blaming or victim shaming, but everybody involved need to take responsibility and say, is, is, is what I'm doing right now going to cause any trouble to my body or put me in harm's way? You know, you got to know that. So both of them, him and her, put themselves in harm's way by just acting out. But hey, that's their prerogative. They're, they're grown. Um, <clears throat> but it's a, it's a shame that we, as a black people, you know, fall for this mess, fall for this media mess. We let... The media tell us what we should and should not be angry at. Because before this, before they brought it up, nobody was thinking about this. I remember some of the same people when the Great Debater came out was like, oh, this is the best movie. I love Nate Parker. People call him uh, the new bae. You know what I'm saying? And now they mad at him. I'm like, yo, when, when did y'all start getting mad, man? But hey, if you want to be mad, that's, that's on you. But I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to put out there what's what in the transcripts of that rape case. She even admitted that the sex was consensual, man. And then she later changed her mind. Like, and she want to change her mind. She want to change her mind. That's up to her. But come on, there's a lot of holes in that story. You know, but um, it's a shame that we let that overshadow the importance of this movie, the importance of this black man. I mean, people mad him because he got a white wife and all kind of stuff. I mean, you give him a side eye. <laughs> but man, look, he, he down for the cause, man. Look, he did it with grassroots level. You can't say he really sold out. You know, he, he, he he got that money himself. He raised that money himself, and then he took it to the people. Isn't that what is, isn't that what we say we should do? You know, grind, get that money. Don't we say all the time like, "Yo, if ain't nobody gonna give it to you, you go out there and get it." And that's what Nate Parker did. He was he was asking people. He tried, at first he tried to get money from the big companies, from us, you know, ABCs and all that. He tried to get that money, but nobody was giving it to him. So he had to go. He had to go grab. He had to go raise that money. He put most of his personal savings and stuff like that into that movie. That's how important the movie was for him. He did it. But but you know, put yourself by the boots by your boots right. He did that. You know, he he did it himself. He earned that money. He made the movie, and then he he, he presented it to the world. And he he threw it out. Yeah it, yeah, it took him eight years to make that movie. You know, that's what I call grind. That's what I call yo. Hey, babe. That's what I call not waiting around for the white man to hand you something. You know, that's a prime example. And then he took it to the festivals and stuff like that. And then his hard work paid off. It just so happened that Fox, you know, they seen what, you know, you know, they, become, they love to see, you know, when, when something they, they, they look for was popping off. So they seen when stuff was popping off. It's like, yo, we're going to buy this movie from you. 17.5 million, you know. Now, I heard, I heard it was a brother who had more money to give to him for... To try to buy the movie out from him. I mean, I, I, I wish he would have just stayed black all the way. But hey, man, get your money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, so he did that, man. And, um, they sabotaged it, man. Like, but it, but this story is important, man. Um, Nat Turner's story is, is very important. Um, we need to study Nat Turner. We need to study, um, the Haitian Revolution. What, what we see going on in Haiti right now is not, it's not by mistake. It's not by happenstance. You know what I'm saying? Now, 
the hurricane is that natural disasters happen. I don't, I don't want him to preach that this time, my man. The hurricane hit me, hated it because of because of voodoo. I want to slap everybody who's saying that. I'm, I'm, I literally want to slap them. <laughs> like yo, if oh my god, if if God can see the natural disaster on anything, it's gonna be America first. You know, if if we want to go that route, right? Come on, man, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Stop the nonsense. But uh, anyway. What ha what's happening to Haiti is is um, I'm talking about like their responses and, and why they're the, the country so poor. It really, Haiti is like Africa is a rich country. They have so many natural resources, you know. But after the Haitian look, the, ha the Haitian people they defeated the British, the French, um, the Spanish. I think the Portuguese. They defeated even parts of the United States. They defeated all of them. I made them look. I mean, they put them to shame. They almost economically bankrupt these countries, you know. And Haiti is responsible for the United States as we know it. The Louisiana Purchase, they couldn't, it wouldn't have been no Louisiana Purchase if it wasn't for Haiti. These things are directly connected, right? Because when Haiti defeated France, you know, that broke the economic back of France. And they, France can no longer hold on to the Louisiana, um, all the land they had for Louisiana Purchase. So they had to sell it. They had to sell it or they was going to lose it. You know, you just lay it down, lay down. And it, that was because of the Haitian people. This sent shockwaves around the world, you know, because the world was invested in Haiti because the island of uh, um, Hispaniola, I think that's what you call it, it's, it's, it produces a lot of natural stuff like it get bananas, berries. They got a lot of gold, oil. I mean, Haiti is booming, man. So don't let people tell you that Haiti is poor. It, it's poor because now, you know, um, France, France, they came back. <coughs> excuse me, they came back and put a lot of, um, I think you call it embargoes on, on Haiti and stuff like that. So they're making the Haitian people pay them. It was like, yo, you work all day and you have to pay ninety percent of your money to another person. You know that's like slavery. So they, it would be economically enslaved, you know. And so they couldn't get the resources and time over time over time. You know it was going down, 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 man. So that's what's been happening in Haiti. And the Clintons are responsible for that because it was over all that um, after the earthquake. It was over where the money goes. The Clintons, man. So yeah. But anyway. After the Haitian Revolution, like I said before, I don't want to sound repetitive, but black people around the world heard about that, man. They were starting to believe in themselves. But anytime an uprising happened, they tried their best to um, snuff it out, man. You know? And so Nat Turner was a, was, a, was a brother. He took the Bible and used it for liberation. You know, he wasn't scared. Like, you know, religion has its place, spirituality has, has its place. I know everybody ain't into it, but. My, I, I get upset with my fellow preachers and stuff like that. Don't use, you know, the Bible or whatever religion you into to liberate your people because that's what it's for. You know, yeah, we we can talk, there's so many things about we can talk about healing and <clears throat> and being a better person. That's in there too, but you have to recognize the times as a as a leader, spiritual leader, preacher, whatever you want to call yourself. You have to recognize the times and and see that our people need some liberation theology because. Nat Turner, when, when he would not have been able to do that without that liberation theology because we are, like I said, in the Hanson, Virginia area during that time, it was a lot of people that were born native, they were native born Africans, you know, and so it, it was an understanding of spirituality and culture around that time. So when he began to speak, they, they recognized that power of spirituality and what it could do. So he was able to galvanize the people for that, for that revolution. And he, he used that Bible he, he, for for liberation, man. And that's very powerful and very important. How you can inspire your people, you know. And so that's important. But I encourage everybody to go see the movie, man. We got to support our people because we've been crying and crying and crying. Who we need real slave movies? We need real slave movies. But when we get it, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, it's, it's something wrong with this. You know, and my people, my black people, I love y'all to death. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we got to stop being so overly critical of each other. You know, we don't hold, we don't hold our white counterparts to the same standard as we hold ourselves. And I, and I guess you gotta hold yourself to a high standard, I get it. But, you know, it, it's, it's ridiculous, We, you know. I mean, everybody gotta be tested. You know, you can't just throw something out there at somebody, white or black, and expect them to accept it. You gotta come correct and thorough. But, you know, I, how we've been doing this movie is, is totally ridiculous. We let this media, White feminism and black feminism sabotage this movie over over something that you know that's been proven in the court of law to be not true, 
And it, it's just a shame. It, it saddens my heart because it's going to be hard for us to rise as a people. We got to do this collectively, man. We can't do this individually. We, we be saying we want black leaders, right? We say we want a black leader. But every time we get a black leader, man, we we put them out there to dry. You know, we let, we let them hang. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it, when it, when our black leaders start getting in trouble, we're like, oh, I ain't going to do with that. Ain't no man perfect. Ain't no man or woman perfect in the world. Even if we have a black leader, they're going to be flawed just like the rest of us. Martin Luther King was flawed. Michael Metz was flawed. Um, Marcus Garber was flawed. You know, these people, but together we can stand strong, man. That's, that's what I'm saying. And, and in this day and age, we got to teach our children who they are, you know. Um, people, some people say, oh, it's just a movie, you know. Yeah, it's just a movie, but it's, it's important. You don't say it's just a movie when you go see this other stuff, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's I don't know. Medea is just a movie, but they make it mean that I like Medea movies, but I'm just saying, I'm making a comparison of how we do things, you know. But um, go see this movie, man. Take your kids to see it. To, uh, not just go see it, but understand what you're looking at and study the history of our people, not just to, not just to get stuck on history, but to really to really know what's going on because we know everybody else's history. We know European history, all the great warriors of, of um, Europe and all that good stuff. We know Jewish history. You know, we know all about the Holocaust and stuff like that. We know all this other stuff. But when it comes to our own history, I don't want to learn about that. I don't want to know about it. It's too black. It's too African, man. You sound stupid. You know, for real. Learn about, learn about who you are because you should learn about who you are. But anyway, the movie was a great movie. I implore everybody to go see it. Um, if you don't want to see it, you don't want to see it. But I think it's a little crazy to say you don't want to see it because of these these fake allegations. I think that's crazy. And I think we do. Some people some of told me like, hey, we don't you can't make people see it. You can't make nobody see it. But we do have an obligation to support our own. Especially in this in this time and place that we're in now in this country. You know, we have an obligation. You go to you can go to any culture and they'll teach their they'll teach their children, yo, you have an obligation to support your people. Especially when it's something good. You don't I mean, you don't want to support no BS. But when you got something good that you know that's gonna lift and push the culture forward just a little bit, we have an obligation. You have a duty. You know? You have a duty. And I don't and I, and I don't I'm not gonna back down from that. We have a duty, man, to support these things, man. If we don't support them, nobody else will. You know, we don't we really don't need nobody else to do what we gotta do. All the answers we have is is, is within us. It's within us, man. We just gotta recognize that. You know? But anyway, man, that's my time. Y'all be easy. Um, this is Don't Skip Breakfast, the movie edition, and um, y'all be blessed, man. Go see the movie.